light of mine on the ship's gonna sink. So come on now, let's fight together. Let's dare to stand beat. Come on now, let's find the answer for what this world. Welcome to Worship uh, Resurrection Lutheran Family and Friends. My name is Paul Dean. It's my great joy and honor to serve as pastor at Resurrection Lutheran Church in Woodbury, Minnesota. We do have a couple of announcements this morning, uh, but the first uh, thing I want to say, I just want to say thank you to Jack Dunning for reading scripture this morning. And a big thank you to all these kids who uh, it's not always easy uh, to do something like this. And all these kids have been reading scripture for us. Uh, throughout this online worship time, and we'll continue to do so when uh, when they're available. And just thank them for being a part of our worship and, and helping us lead worship. So that's uh, an amazing opportunity for our kids, and just thank them for doing that. Another announcement is that we are uh, moving to an indoor worship format on November 8th. So that is next Sunday. November 8th at 9 o'clock and at 10.30, we'll keep our regular worship times that we've had. Uh, there are some instructions that will be mailed out to you guys uh, through the e-newsletter and then also through um, a letter going out to every home and then on our website. 
Uh, that will be out early next week. Uh, we obviously uh, have to uh, move our chairs around and, and make sure we have our COVID preparedness plan uh, ready to go. And the big change would be that you would need to RSVP uh, for worship if you uh, desire to worship in person next Sunday, November the 8th. A lot more information coming out about that. But of course, we will continue to have this online worship as well uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, as we know that things can change at any time, and uh, some of us are just a lot more comfortable worshiping uh, online and uh, um, at home. So that's coming out, and uh, we'll just kind of hold all of that uh, loosely as we move through this time, especially uh, in winter. Uh, I know that there are some school districts that, that are now going to um, online distance only uh, time now as the pandemic uh, kind of heats up a little bit. So we're going to kind of play by ear and see uh, how long we uh, move indoor. Uh, but that is uh, coming up next Sunday, November the 8th, 9 o'clock and 1030. Please check your mail uh, early next week for some information. And then we're moving into our new worship series. This is the last Sunday that we're talking about legacy. But uh, this coming up uh, the November, November 8th, we'll be starting our stewardship series on threshold, um, uh, about threshold and moving through uh, these different thresholds of generosity. And so we invite you to join us with that as we, uh, as we look toward uh, our new worship series. Well, as we come together this morning, uh, let's join together, no matter where we are, no matter what time uh, we're watching this as well, and let us worship together. Two, four, two. us in love and for love. 
because you are filled with love and mercy, we can bring our confessions to you. At this moment, let us bring our confessions to God. God, you know us. You have claimed us. You know there are times when we don't do what we should. And there are times when we do the very thing we should not. Our choices, thoughts, attitudes, and behaviors can be barriers to healthy relationships. Forgive us. Loving God, you reached out to us through time and space and entered our existence in the one named Jesus Christ. Because of his life, death, and resurrection, we are forgiven. Because of him, we are a new creation in Christ. Amen. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the will and never run strike. to you about rules. Now rules are important, aren't they? Whether you're at school or at work or playing or driving in your car, there are rules that you are expected to follow. 
in just about every classroom that I've ever been in, there's usually a poster that looks something like this on the wall with a list of rules. Now, I think this is a pretty good list of rules. It says, listen carefully, follow directions, work quietly, respect others, play safely, use kind words, wait for your turn, tell the truth, raise your hand, and do your best. Now, this is a good set of rules, but do you know which one is the most important? Or which one would your teacher think, think is the most important? If you were to ask me, I think maybe the like respecting others or using kind words would be some of the more important words, more important rules to follow, right? Treating other people with respect and using nice words, kind words. Now, today in our Bible, we're going to hear a Bible verse, Matthew, in the book of Matthew, where somebody comes up and asks Jesus what the most important rules are. Now, the rules in Jesus' time were the Ten Commandments, which we all know, but even more than that. The Jewish people had over 600 rules to follow. That's a lot and a lot to remember. So asking Jesus what the most important rules are would be both a hard question to answer, probably, but a good question to ask. And so Jesus responds that it's the two most important rules are love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and love your neighbor. And he also says, all of the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. So everything else, all the other rules, all the other 10 commandments, everything else rely on these two things. The reason we have rules in the 10 commandments is so we put God first and we show love to our neighbors. And we're not just talking about our next door neighbors. We're talking about all the people that we meet. So we love other people. And that can sometimes be kind of hard. And in Deut Deuteronomy 6, right after one of the times that it lists the Ten Commandments in the Bible, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. These commandments I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. That sounds like all the time to me. Does that sound like all the time to you? So learning these things and talking about them all the time helps us to remember them, helps us to put God first, and helps us to love one another. And you know what else we can do? We can always ask God for help. So let's do that right now. Will you pray with me? Dear God, Thank you so much for loving us. Please help us to love others and to put you first. In your name we pray, amen. My name is Jack. I'm gonna be reading to you Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 40. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of prophets are based on these two commandments. Hello. First, thank you, Jack, for reading today's scripture. We appreciate you. What do you all think of when you hear the word legacy? An inheritance? The talents or behaviors or love that lasts long after you are gone? An obituary website? I think first, of family when I hear the word legacy. Families can pass down all manner of legacies through generations, good ones, hard ones, and everything in between. Family reunions are big in my background. 
So for a reunion, a relative printed reflections from my great, great grandparents. A school teacher in Norway, my great, great grandfather would send destitute children home to his wife over the lunch break with a note saying, give this child some food. No doubt she has had no breakfast. This was a family with 10 children, but they helped however they were able. That same mother in later life, as she looked back, wrote this, my heart is filled with a sense of the gratitude and praise I owe my God and my fellow man for grace received and for the goodwill and love shown. What a legacy. And then to hear older relatives remember how the same woman would pray regularly, daily, for future generations. For those of us who never knew her, for those yet to be born, she was loving children she didn't know with needed food, and she was praying for people like me, whom she would never meet with needed prayer. That is a legacy I can hardly believe is part of my own inheritance. The legacy of a woman living daily, li daily living God's kingdom into reality. What choices can I make today to pass forward such a legacy? What choices can each of us make wherever God guides us to help us build God's kingdom here? I appreciated the children's message about rules. Recently, the rule of life concept keeps cropping up for crossing my path. Bishop Michael Curry writes, a rule of life supports us. It's a way to create tangible habits that support our heart's intentions. Habits to support our heart's intentions the intentions God has placed in our souls. The most famous rule of life is St. Benedict's, but various resources dive deeper into this idea in practical and current ways. One reason I raise this idea today is because of a suggestion from this book, The Common Rule. It's a book on the rule of life that I highly recommend, and it could be an awesome resource for life groups here. So if you're interested in hearing more, talk to me later. In one section of The Common Rule, the writer suggests the habit of an hour away from phone. He suggests we ask, am I too distracted to actually serve my neighbor? He adds, there is no love of neighbor outside of attention to the neighbor. I had to ask myself, what are ways I pay attention to a neighbor? How do I give only distracted attention sometimes? I don't know about you, but my attention for others is sometimes lacking more often than I would like to admit. When my kids were little, I got pretty good at the inattentive response. Mm-hmm, really, mm-hmm, yeah, we'll see, yeah, yeah. I could play with Legos without being present at all, pretending to have a conversation while mentally being elsewhere. Not proud of that. You'll have to ask my kids how I did. I hope that maybe they don't even remember. Of course, serving our neighbor has gotten more challenging this year. If you're looking for a project, Take time to list ways to serve your neighbor without putting someone's health at risk. Some of us can donate to the needs of a neighbor. Others can walk outdoors with a neighbor in need of a listening ear or companion. Truly listening patiently to a coworker perhaps. Or is there a way to fund a day off for someone who's desperately in need of a break? A phone call, a note in the mail, an email. There are ways. I'd love to hear yours. It helps to start thinking about how I actually see, really see my neighbor. Do I see from a distance with my attention divided in several directions? 
And more importantly, do I see him or her as God sees? I have trifocals, which means I can see at a distance, closer for a conversation, and for reading. Zoom calls, not so much. What if I look to a neighbor I know, or one that I don't, with whatever lens God uses, trying to see her heart, or trying to see his genuine concerns? Can I see my neighbor as God does? If I'm not loving God with my whole heart, my mind, my soul, what does God want me to see? The writer Wendell Berry speaks of the people in his fictional town as a membership. One of the characters said, the way we are, we are members of each other, all of us, everything. The difference ain't in who is a member and who's not, but in who knows it, and who don't. That reminds me of Romans 12 verse 5. We who are many are one body in Christ and individually we are members of one another. How do we remind each other of who may need to know this and hear this and feel this? How do we live out this membership, this neighbor love, when we see one another less and less both due to our techie world, but also with the challenges of 2020. Today's passage again, this time from the message translation, from the message Bible. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence. This is the most important, the first on any list, but there is a second to set alongside it. Love others as well as you love yourself. These two commandments are pegs. Everything in God's law and the prophets hangs from these pegs. So simple, so hard, so straightforward, and so very challenging. When I think of these intertwined commandments, and they are, as Jesus said, not set above, but alongside one another, I think of a Mobius strip. I have a homemade Mobius strip here, but if you wanna get creative, you can make one at home. If you follow this strip along one side, you are always turning from one side to another. The path is continuous. It never ends. It is all connected. One side turns into the other. And in thinking about God's command to love the Lord with all our heart, soul, and mind, we are also on the same path to love our neighbor as ourselves. These are not separate, but set next to one another from the same peg. Together, where from all the, from all the other commands are. To love God is also to love our neighbor. It may help us to think about the love Jesus is commanding with the reminder that it is agape love, not the love of feelings and emotion, but rather a love of active mercy, love that comes from the God who loves, who is love, love that is of God. This love of neighbor is a choice we make, motivated by loving God with our passion and our prayer and our intelligence. And to love God wholeheartedly can be difficult if we think of our love as the feeling kind of love. We all know people, neighbors or not, friends and family, who at times we can't emotionally love. Certainly there are times, I hope, when you overflow with Jesus' love, with Jesus' great grace deeply abounding in the people that surround you. But at times, this love may feel more distant. The command to love can strengthen us. When John and I visited our daughter in Madagascar, I was thanking the man whose family hosted her on occasion. She was far from home for a long time, and he was the one we knew who willed her good, 
who had her best interests at heart. At first, his response startled me. It was not the Minnesota, oh, it's nothing, or you are welcome. He said, seriously, it is our duty. Yes, as Christians, loving God is our duty, our call. And loving neighbor is our duty. Love of neighbor is something we do. And love of neighbor in this active with God way is not always the Instagram picture, or it may not have the convenience of passing along something that we no longer want to someone who might need it. That can be good, but what if this neighbor love is standing up for a coworker's rights in an unfair workplace? What if this love of neighbor is showing more grace than you think you have to, or that you think you have in you, to a stressed out clerk, a medical worker, a police officer, a teacher, someone more exhausted than you perhaps? What if you remember the endless grace God will give you in that moment? What if loving God by loving our neighbor means letting go of something that I will miss? What if actively loving those God has asked me to love makes me uncomfortable? One legacy that we raise up in our family is the tradition of gathering, of prioritizing family time together. Unintentionally, we grew a tradition of hosting Thanksgiving. Actually, John received a turkey from his employer and ta-da, a tradition was born. So my side of the family comes to our home for the holiday. And even with recipe fails, uh, with the many ways our day is not picture perfect, it has become a precious and treasured time. However, this year we have let go of what we love so much out of a greater love. Active mercy and care for aging parents seem to make the most sense for us. Rather than spending time with out-of-state family and travelers, we don't always know what is the best way to love a neighbor or a family member. And I'm not saying that our choice is major or unique or noteworthy, but for this year, the way we love our relatives looks different. What if we give our mail away? This week, I was able to serve with one of our members at an organization called Every Meal. It's a program that gives foods to food to students who might go home to an empty cupboard over the weekend. What if those of us who are able donate extra food to hungry neighbors? Or to those for whom the holidays are simply long or lonely? The verses in Matthew 22, just before the ones we read today, show the Pharisees are trying to show Jesus up, to test him, to best him, it made me wonder, when am I guilty of that? When might I be more invested in testing someone or challenging them? Not out of an honest desire to know or to converse, but trying to win a challenge. Is there a way I can give better, better attention to a neighbor than through a social media conversation that may not really be a conversation? The writer of the common rule reminds us, we will never build lives of love out of anything except ordinary days. Loving God, loving neighbor is part of ordinary days. Simple, perhaps beautiful, but ordinary days. Loving God by loving our neighbor may have various challenges. Some days it is far easier than others. But each of us can step back and think, what ordinary gift do I have to share? How will that draw me closer to the Lord I love? What today can I do that is a building block, however small, in loving someone God has placed in front of me? How do I love God today? God's commands are gifts to us. What gift is wrapped in this? Love God and love your neighbor. 
When we grow into that, what a legacy we leave for each other and for future generations. Join me in praying that each of us and all of us, we can live resurrection together in love for the good of our neighbor. Amen. Heavenly Father, always amaze me Let your kingdom come in my world in my life Give me the food I need to live through the day Give me as I from temptation deliver me from the evil one look out the window birds are composing not a note is out of tune out of place Walk through the meadow Stare at the flowers Better dress than any girl on the wedding day So why should I worry why do I freak out? God knows what I need. You know what I need. Your love is, your love is, your love is strong. Your love is, your love is, your love is.
told me that you are strong and you love me. Yes, you love me. Please pray with me. God, please be with families, students, as they continue to navigate school both in person and online. Fill families with your peace. Surround them with your love and give them hope in these uncertain times. God, we pray that you are with those that are struggling with illness. Draw near. Surround them with your healing hand and bring comfort to all. God, we pray for our world. We give you thanks that you are our creator and that you care deeply for your people. Bring your peace to the worried. Bring hope to the hopeless. Surround us with your presence this week. At this time, let us lift up our prayers to God. In your name we pray, amen. Together, let us pray the prayer our Father taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and live resurrection.
See you. 